talk crazy for a moment. You know, a lot of times I don't know a lot of things. And I, I actually realized that one fact in this world is it's important to learn from other people. To actually gain some information. And that's why diversity is important. You know, I said before, um, you know, I, I say a lot of things which probably are very misleading even, you know, just the way I said it. When I said I don't believe in uh, diversity and stuff like that. Well, it's, you know, I'm, first of all, let me say something. Because I was thinking about this yesterday. I kept thinking about it. It's not an, a question of believing anything. It's not really a matter of believing or disbelieving something. So much as it's a matter of there are certain things which are just, just simply facts. Now, you could either acknowledge those facts or not acknowledge them. In the world in which we live in, there is diversity, whether you like it or not. There are diverse opinions, diverse ways of looking at things, diverse attitudes and everything. And those things are facts. And it's something you cannot change. You are not going to make that go away. You're not going to make it disappear. Now, you can acknowledge it or you can ignore it. It's not a believe in issue. I think sometimes I get to thinking that maybe one of the biggest mistakes sometimes that I can catch myself making is using that word believe in a little bit too much. And people say, Do you believe in God? Say, You know, or do you believe in evolution? What does that mean, believe in? Certain things are facts. Certain things have been established and they've been accepted as true. Now, you could reject those things or you could come up with something to overturn it, especially when you talk about science. If, if in reality, life began in some way that you understand, that you truly know, and you can demonstrate that, do experimentation and testing and research or whatever, then you present that and you convince people, especially science people, that is the case, then it may become the new established theory. Sometimes there are things that people believe scientifically that just turned out not to be true. I, I thought one of the most interesting ones was there was a long time ago the belief that there was a, another planet I mean, not the Pluto thing, this was before Pluto, way back in the early, like the 1800s or something, the late 1800s, early 1900s, whatever, there was a belief that there was a planet somewhere between Mercury and the Sun. But nobody could see it. But they believed that that planet had to exist because it was affecting the movement of the planet Mercury. Mercury didn't quite follow Newton's law about the movement of planets, though, what they call it, the perihelion movement or something. I forget exactly. I don't remember all the terminology for it, but it didn't move quite exactly the same, the way it was supposed to. And so the explanation was that there must be another planet. We just can't see it. Maybe it's too small or something. I don't know. Between the sun and Mercury. And scientists believe that. They even had a name for that planet. And it's kind of interesting <laughs> what the name of that planet was because you know, it sort of kind of worked their way into science fiction. It was a planet called Vulcan, which, of course, obviously, we you know if you're a Star Trek fan, that's where Spock came from, the planet Vulcan. But, you know, but it was a planet that scientists actually believed existed back then. Of course, that was obviously way before there was Star Trek. But then later on they discovered it didn't exist, but why did they change their mind? They changed their mind because Einstein, in his theory, in one of his theories, I don't remember which one it was, if it, I don't know if it was the theory of relativity or one of his other theories, that actually explained the movement of Mercury. Why Mercury moved in a different way from other planets. So, Science was wrong, but science was right. As somebody once said, even when science is right, even when science is wrong, it's right. Because you got to remember, science is more than just a product. It's a process. But I didn't mean to get into this science thing 
for a moment. I just want to say that sometimes you can say things and then you have to think about what you said and how it sounds and the way you use words. And you have to rethink them. You have to go through a process. So it's always a matter of processing things, a matter of looking at things and saying, well, maybe I shouldn't have said it like that because it sounds like I'm saying something else. But let me get into this thing about diversity and equality. Everything isn't really equal in the sense that every behavior, obviously, we don't judge it to be equal. We don't judge, you know, someone giving, a man giving his wife a kiss and a man slapping his wife. We don't judge it the same way. One we approve of, one we disapprove of. But you know, there are lots of other things we disapprove of and approve of, and it would vary from time to time as our ideals, you know, come along. You know, if you see a black man kissing a white woman, you know, today that might be more acceptable in some places. And a long time ago, that was so unacceptable. In some places, it would have been illegal. In some places, you know, a black man like myself would have been hung from a tree. People see things different at different times. They reevaluate, they rethink things. I was thinking, you know, and I thought about this, too, very heavily. When I was in Japan, back in 2004, and I was, I was sitting down, you know, writing in my little journal in my hotel room in Hiroshima. And I was thinking, what is the difference between now and 60 years earlier? You know, what's the difference between now and 60 years earlier? Because where I was... You know, I'm thinking, I'm in this hotel room, and it's like three blocks away from the place where the atomic bomb, you know, exploded. The actual point of the explosion. It's like three blocks away from where I'm sitting. And I'm thinking, if I was in this place 60 years earlier, I would have been vaporized. What is the difference? We were so at war with this country, and now we're friendly with it. And the difference is in the way we think about it the way we process it in our minds. That's the difference. Things change. So whenever I put things out on video, I always think about it. I reevaluate what I say. And I think maybe I shouldn't have said it that way. Maybe the basic feelings are there, but it's the way I express it. It sounds like I'm saying something other than what I'm saying. That's why the process has to keep going on. That's why, you know, it's one of the things I believe very strongly about doing. I don't want to use the word believe in too much. You can't help it. It's just part of language. Um, is that you have to keep processing things. You know, creativity helps a lot in learning to try something and redo something. You know, I, I showed in one of my videos how my paintings have progressed. Because earlier paintings like kindergarten type stuff. But I still keep them. It's the same thing with my videos. I keep, if you look at some of my earlier videos, some of the things I said I actually disagree with now. But I've evolved in my thinking. And that's what you have to do. You have to evolve. You have to go through a process. And this is the thing about science, too, that I like about science. That science goes through an evolution. It could believe, you know, scientists could believe something a long time ago. But then when they take a closer look, they may change their mind. And that's the one good thing, you know. Being flexible, being able and willing to change the way you think about something and the way you express something. Because sometimes you need to clarify things. And that's the thing. Thinking evolved. There is an evolution to things. That's all I have to say.